Good morning and welcome to the benefits of uh, Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred and St Peter where you join us for our service of morning prayer in Lent on Thursday the 17th of March 2022. My name is John Morrison and I'm standing in for our clergy, the Reverend Joe Richards, our rector and the Reverend Jenny Walpole, our curate. Today in the calendar of the Church of England, we join with our Irish colleagues to celebrate the life of Patrick Bishop, ministry, patron of Ireland, who died around uh, 460. A few words about Patrick. Patrick was a Romano Briton, born in about the year 390, of Christian parents in the latter years of the Roman Empire in Britain. The exact place of his birth, named by him in his confession as Banavan Tiberiniac, has never been identified. Claims from places in West Britain, as far apart as Dumbarton and Cornwall, have been made. Present day opinion favours the neighbourhood of a Carlisle. He was captured by Irish raiders when he was 16 years old and taken to Ireland as a slave. After six years he escaped and seems to have gone to continental Europe. He eventually found his way back to his own family where his previously nominal Christian faith grew and matured. He returned to Gaul and was there trained as a priest and much influenced by the form of um, monasticism evolving under Martin of Tours. When he was in his early 40s, he returned to Ireland as a bishop, ministering first uh, uh, at Saul near Downpatrick and later making his base at Armagh, which became the centre of his see. He evangelised the people of the land by walking all over the island, gently bringing men and women to a knowledge of Christ. Although he faced fierce opposition and possible persecution, he continued his missionary journeys. Patrick left two pieces of writing which are accepted as genuine. His confession and a letter to Caroticus. These are of immense value as they reveal Patrick the man, humble and aware that all he achieved was by the grace of Christ. Irish Christians today of all traditions equally identify with this holy man and draw inspiration from his life and writings. Despite being unsuccessful in his attempt to establish the diocesan system, he experienced in Gaul, his monastic foundation proved to be the infrastructure required to maintain the faith after his death, which occurred on this day in the year 461. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment. Give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving spirit, Saint, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our song of penitence. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned 
and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious Spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 34, starting at the first verse, is, O taste and see that the Lord is gracious. O taste and see that the Lord is gracious. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon him and be radiant, and your faces shall not be ashamed. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. The, this poor soul cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Fear the Lord, all you his holy ones. For those who fear him lack nothing. Lions may lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you fear of the Lord. Who is there who delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are upon, are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken hearted and will save those who are crushed in spirit. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Many are the troubles of the righteous, from them it will from them all will the Lord deliver them. He keeps their bones so that not one of them is broken. But evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants and will condemn none who seek refuge in him. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Send your holy angels to watch over us, O God, that on our lips will be found your truth and in our hearts your love, so that we may ever taste your goodness in the land of the living, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 45, starting at the first verse, and continues the story of Joseph and his brothers. 
Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life, for the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither ploughing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and a lord to all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herd, herds and all you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honoured in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. A canticle is the song of Manasseh. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God, the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence. Before your great and mighty power, immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look to, up to the heights of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O oh my God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgression. Unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. For all the hosts of heaven sings your praise, and all your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God, the Most High, the Almighty. Our second reading this morning is from a letter to the Hebrews, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Therefore, brothers and sisters, holy partners in a heavenly calling, consider that Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our Confession, was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Yet Jesus is worthy of more glory than Moses, just as the builder of a house 
has more honour than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that would be spoken later. Christ, however, was faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house if we hold firm the confidence and the pride that belong to hope. Our chant and responsory. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. O my God, in you I trust. Our Gospel Canticle is again the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Christ gave them as a light to the nations that his salvation might reach the ends of the earth. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in the darkness and shadow, the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach the ends of the earth. We pray this morning for all the tasks that we are about in this God-given day, for all the needs of this created world by our God, and for the church that worships our God and her life. We continue to pray especially for the peace talks in Ukraine. And we are asked to pray for all those faithful Russians who abhor the move to war by their leaders. We pray for their continued strength to object in the face of oppression. And we pray for those who are dying on both sides as a result of this unnecessary conflict. We are asked to pray for those who are preparing in this season for baptism and confirmation. We look to our leadership, both sacred and profane, that that leadership may be inspired by the words of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for all those who are looking for forgiveness, that they may find a help with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. We pray for us all as we are misled by false gods 
for this present age. And we pray especially today for those who are hungry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> the collect of the day. Almighty God, who in your providence chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle of the Irish people, keep alive in us the fire of the faith he kindled and strengthen us in our pilgrimage towards the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <coughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for this service of morning prayer. I'm delighted to say that the sun is beaming out and I'm lucky enough to look onto a magnolia tree with beautiful blossoms particularly on the western, uh, on the eastern side of the tree as the sun comes up. And I hope that you will all have a lovely day. God bless you all and goodbye.